Hi there, thank you so much for joining me today. We have a fourth update to my Club 100 series. In these videos, I choose 15 products, mostly makeup, but anything in hair care, skin care, or beauty related. And I show you ones that I've used at least 100 times and I don't repeat. So if you look at Club 100 videos one through three, those are completely different sets of products. It's a motivator for me to reach for things more, use them at least 100 times, but also I think it's just helpful to share what products I use enough. I mean, if I've used it 100 times, it means I actually tolerate it enough or like it enough to use it that many times, and it is something that I enjoy using regularly. So I'm gonna get started with the makeup products. In my previous update, I talked about the shade Pillow Talk, and now I'm talking about the shade Bitch Perfect which is a more satin formula and it's a little bit more peachy. I've actually used this 125 times, so I've used it even more than 100 times. Still trying to figure out if these are something I will buy again. I have had them for a long time. I bought this at the beginning of 2018 and I haven't used it up, so it's not something that I just burn through, but I also don't wear lipstick every day. And because this is $34 full price, Part of me just isn't sure if that's something I want to buy again. If anyone knows of a more affordable dupe for this, please let me know. I'd be interested in trying it. But I just don't reach for lipsticks that much. And as fabulous as this packaging is, as much as I like this product, $34 just seems a little bit steep for me. The next product I want to talk about is actually one that I have decluttered, and it's from Milani. It's the Bold Obsessions palette. And even though I do like this palette, and I do recommend it if this is what you're looking for, I just don't see myself reaching for this over the other eyeshadow palettes that I have in my collection. There are a couple duds in this palette. Uh, this red shade right here really doesn't do it for me, and neither does this navy blue, but I think it's just because I don't reach for navy blues that often. I did do a 5 looks 2 palettes with this and the Most Loved Mattes palette from Milani, which I also recently decluttered. And I used those two palettes together to create 5 different looks, and I did use that navy blue shade and enjoy it, but like I said, just in comparison to everything else I have, this is lower in my favorites, so I thought I would pass it on while it's still relatively new. I do have another palette. It's from Zoeva. It's the On Taupe palette. I'm not sure if this is available on the Ulta website. I think if you want this specific one, you might have to order straight from Zoeva or maybe from the Beautylish website. I picked this up when I was in Italy last year visiting family, and this kind of color story works really well for me. I do love pinks and grays and cool tone purples, but I do think the majority of my uses came from these two shades right here. I have stitch by stitch and hour by hour, and they both have pan in them. Mixing them together was a really great setting shade for my lid. And this shade right here, Handmade, is very unique. It's got a pink undertone, but then a gold shift. I know lots of brands have a version of that shade. I think uh, Cleona has a shade called Prophecy that does the same thing. And then ColourPop, I think, has one called Come and Get It. And I do have a shade like that in my Tarte Make Believe in Yourself palette as well that has a similar vibe. They're not all exact dupes, but they do similar things. This gallery shade is a gorgeous, cool-toned transition shade for my skin tone, and I just really like this palette a lot. It makes me want to try more from Zoeva, but there aren't really any palettes out right now that are catching my eye. I have two blushes here. They are both liquid blushes from Flower Beauty. I have the shade Bubbly and Pinched. If you can see, they're both very, very thin, and I do see myself finishing these within the next couple of months. I love combining them. I think the color that they create together is really pretty. Bubbly, I don't love as much on its own. And sometimes Pinched doesn't give me the level of pigment, the level of color that I want, so mixing them together is perfect. I'm not sure if I'll run out and repurchase these again. There might be some other uh, formulas from other brands that I want to try. I know Glossier, um, Ulta Beauty, CoverGirl, they all have their own versions of liquid blushes like this. So if you have a, another formula that you think I should try, let me know. I have a highlighter here from The Balm. It's the Mary Luminizer. And I purchased this, I think, back in 2015. It's one of my oldest products. So I don't know the exact number of uses that I've used it because I didn't track uses back then. But I did start recently tracking tracking uses once I hit pan, and ever since I started tracking, I've used this an additional 78 times. So if I already hit pan on it before I even started tracking uses, I think it's pretty safe to say that I've used this at least 100 times. I'm wearing it today. I think it's just such a gorgeous highlighter. 
Part of me thinks I will probably repurchase this again once this is finished. I might also hold off on that and focus on some of the other highlighters in my collection, but I really love this. And because it is one of my older products, I do want to finish it at some point, hopefully by the end of this year. Such a gorgeous highlighter. There's a reason why people still talk about this even after all these years, and I love it. It's one of my favorite highlighters I've ever owned. The next two products I had to talk about are powders. The first one is from RCMA. It's the No Color Powder. This is three ounces for I think like 14 or 18 dollars you get a ton of products in here if you can see this one is empty I did finish it earlier this year and I'm using two other loose powders in my collection right now one from Hourglass and the other one from Too Faced and honestly those ones are so much more expensive and I don't see what extra value they provide that this one doesn't I kind of was sick of this by the time I was finished with it but now that I don't have it anymore part of me thinks that I should buy it again so once I work through some of my other loose powders in my collection I'll probably just come back to this one I just don't need anything fancy I just need it to work to set my liquid and cream products on my face so I can put powder products on top and then I do use a setting spray so it's not like it's something that I need to be perfect it's very lightweight if you do apply too much it can have the capacity to be a little bit dusty or leave a white cast but like I said I use a very light layer just to set the cream products on my face and then I do use a setting spray later so I never really have that issue I'm also quite pale so you might just not be able to see the white cast on me to begin with <laughs> but yeah now that this is gone I'm missing it and I will most likely repurchase at some point and my last powder is one from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Airbrush Flawless Finish Skin Perfecting Micro Powder in the shade 1 Fair. I have actually used this 108 times, including today I've been using it to set my under eyes. I never really used this to set my entire face. It really just was for touch-ups on certain parts of my face. And most recently I am using this exclusively to set my under eye concealer. I do understand why some people might really enjoy it, but for me, $40 or $45 for a powder is just not something I'm willing to do again. So once this is gone, I'll just find another powder. I have a Besame Violet powder that I can use or really any translucent lightweight powder I can use under my eyes. I'm not very picky. So as much as I'm enjoying this, I don't think you need to run out and buy it unless you know that this is the type of powder that would work really well with your skin. Now for non-makeup products, I still think that these are important to talk about because I don't really discuss non-makeup products on my channel as much as I do makeup, so it's kind of just a chance for me to give a shout out to some products in my other beauty routines that don't include makeup that I still think are really good and worth sharing. The first one is reusable cotton rounds. I have a little bag of them. These ones are unused. I kind of only use one or two at a time and continuously wash them and then keep the other ones just in storage. Uh, whenever they're not washed, whenever they're brand new, they're very soft. And then I guess as you continue washing them and using them, like after a long, long time, they do get a little bit rougher. They come in this little bamboo bag. If I can find the link of where I got these, I will provide it in the description box. I think I got it from Amazon. I don't love rec recommending Amazon, but I don't really know where else you'd be able to get something like this. And I got really lucky on my first try. I know not all reusable cotton rounds are made equal. I talked about these at the end of last year or the beginning of this year. I talked about my top 10 purchases of 2019. I use them to remove makeup. I use them to put on toner. I use them sometimes when I have like a oil or a balm on my skin to get rid of makeup and I'll use this to kind of gently remove that. I'll also sometimes use it with micellar water to wipe away eyeshadow fallout before I do the rest of my face makeup. They're gentle, they're effective, they're easy to keep clean. I find that they don't stain very easily unless you use liquid lipsticks. Liquid lipsticks will stain them and I don't know how to get that out, but other than that, you can get out mascara and eyeliner and eyeshadow and glitter and stuff pretty easily. I used to be the person who would purchase cotton rounds in bulk from Costco, I think from Swispers, which is also a cruelty-free brand, but because I go through them so quickly, especially to remove eye makeup and stuff, um, I think the reusable cotton rounds are better, not only better for the environment, but also better for my wallet. I have two oils from The Ordinary that I want to talk about. I don't have one of the bottles with me because I used it up and I haven't repurchased it yet. And the first one is the Rosehip Seed Oil and the other one is the Marula Oil. The Rosehip Seed Oil is a little bit more lightweight and I prefer it, but the Marula Oil also does the job. So whenever this is out of stock, I'll pick up the Marula Oil in its place. I use these at night exclusively and depending on how dry my skin is, I'll either mix it in with a moisturizer and put it on my skin or I'll put the moisturizer on first and then I'll put a couple of drops on this on top. 
I think that's more of a personal preference. Whatever you prefer, I just really love incorporating oils into my skincare routine, especially at night. The next two products I have to talk about are hair conditioners. The first one is the Pacifica Banana Love. You guys know I love this. I think it's super kind to my hair. It makes my ends look really nice. It is something that I leave in my hair for as long as I can in the shower to kind of treat it like a hair mask. It smells like a banana dessert. And if you can get this on sale for like 30% off whenever Pacifica has those types of sales, you can actually get a pretty good deal on it. I think full price, this is like 16 bucks for six ounces. I did purchase a couple of these as backup during the last holiday sale that Pacifica had. And I'm almost finished with the one in my shower. This is just a brand new one that I had in backup. So 100% vegan and cruelty free and it's one of my favorite Pacifica products that I own. I did do a best and worst Pacifica video a while back and I showed this as one of my favorites from that brand. The other conditioner I want to talk about I don't actually have on me. It's the Desert Essence Italian Grape Conditioner. I've tried a couple conditioners from that line and the Italian Grape one is my favorite. I feel like that one actually gives me moisture in my hair and it doesn't just rinse away and do nothing like the lemon one. The lemon one is garbage. I'll be honest with you. I didn't like that one at all. But the grape one is really good and it's very affordable. I get it from the Vitacost website. I think you can get De Desert Essence in some drugstores like CVS or Walgreens. I'm not sure. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, I wouldn't recommend the lemon one, but the Italian grape one is really nice. And my last two products are skincare products and they're both from the e.l.f. line. I think they're from the same line because they have the similar color packaging. The first one is the Hello Hydration Face Cream. I think this might be called Holy Hydration now. I'm not sure which it is at this point in time, but they changed it over time. They also offer a fragrance-free version of this as well. So that is what I will repurchase once I use up this one. This has hyaluronic acid and a peptide complex. And if you can get it during the half-off sales on the Ulf website, you can get it for $6, which is a great deal. I did talk about this in a How Long Does It Take to Use Up Skincare video a while ago, so I'll link that in the cards so you can get a better idea of how much this costs per use and whether or not it would be a good value for you. I think it's fantastic. I just used this this morning on my skin. I used it last night. I use it both during day and night, and I just think it's such a great cream. Moisturizing, but not too heavy. Works well under makeup, and I think it works any time of the year. My last one is a face wash. It's also from e.l.f. It's the Daily Face Cleanser with Purified Water. You get five ounces, and I think full price it's $4. But once again, I buy it a couple during the e.l.f. half-off sales. So they're actually $2 a piece, which is great because both I and James use this. I think this is a really nice run-of-the-mill basic cleanser. I don't really like to spend a lot of money on skincare, to be honest. A lot of the stuff that I use is from the e.l.f or The Ordinary or from other affordable brands. I just don't really have any desire, at least right now, and I haven't for a while, to spend a lot of money on skincare. I have a pretty simple routine. I only use maybe five products at the most, and my skin is very well behaved. I don't feel like I'm not addressing any specific concern. I am curious to try the Essence from e.l.f. I think that would be cool to try, and maybe a serum or something for the drier months when my skin needs a little bit more moisture. But my skincare is very streamlined, it's very simple, and in my opinion, it's very affordable. And this is a part of that. I really like it. I've gone through several bottles of this. So those are my 15 products that I've used 100 times. I don't really have a lot of products that are close to the 100 use mark right now, so my next video might not be for several months. Let me know what are some things in your collection that you've used at least 100 times, if not more. I hope you enjoyed this video, but in the meantime, that's everything I have. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.